Welcome back. We are still on the topic statistics. In the previous video, we learned how to find the class width, class midpoint or the mid value, and the class boundaries for a given data. In this video, we are going to apply what we studied in the previous video to draw a histogram for a grouped data. Let's consider the question we have here. The question says we should draw a histogram to represent the data below. In the table, we have the ages of workers in years and the number of workers or the frequencies. The ages have been given to us in intervals, so this is clearly a grouped data. We are going to draw a histogram to represent this data. From the previous video, we learned that when you are asked to draw a histogram for a group data, you may have the class midpoint or the mid value or the class boundaries on the horizontal axis. And on the vertical axis, you may have the frequencies or the frequency densities depending on the class size or the class width of the different classes that you have. So whether you have the frequencies or the frequency densities on the vertical axis depends on the class size or the class width of the different classes that you have. If the class size is the same for all the classes, then you have the frequencies. But if the class sizes are different, then you have the frequency densities. So you first have to determine whether the class size is the same for all the classes. And just as we learned in the previous video, a quick way of doing that is by finding the difference between the upper class limit and the lower class limit for the different classes. The first one is 10 to 14. So the difference will be 14 minus 10, which is 4. The second one, 19 minus 15, that is 4. The third one, 24 minus 20, that will give us 4. The fourth one, 25 minus, sorry, the fourth one, 29 minus 25, that will give us 4. The fifth one, 34 minus 30, that will give us 4. And the last one, 39 minus 35, that will give us 4. So we can see that the difference between the upper class limit and the lower class limit for all the classes is the same. What it means is that the class sizes or the class widths will also be the same. And so if the class sizes or the class width are the same, then on the vertical axis, we are going to have the frequencies, which is given to us in the table as the number of workers. So we are going to have the number of workers or the frequencies on the vertical axis. Now let's come to the horizontal axis. On the horizontal axis, just as we learned in the previous video, you may either have the class midpoint or the mid values or the class boundaries. That one you have to choose. For this particular question, I'm going to solve it with both. So in this video, I'll solve the question. That is, I'll draw the histogram with the class midpoint or the mid value. And then in the next video, I'll solve this same question, but I will use the class boundaries on the horizontal axis. So for this particular video, I'm going to use the class midpoint or the mid value on the horizontal axis. We have the class midpoint or the mid value on the horizontal axis. And then on the vertical axis, we have the frequencies, which is the number of workers. We will need a column for the class midpoint or the mid value in the table. So I'll add another column to it. Now we have to find the class midpoint for each of the intervals given to us. From the previous video, we learned that the class midpoint for a particular interval, you can find it by adding the lower class limit of that interval to the upper class limit of that same interval, and then you divide the results by 2. So for the first one, it will be 10 plus 14, 
which will give us 24 and then we will divide the result by 2 which will give us 12. For the second one is going to be 15 plus 19 which is 34. 34 divided by 2 give us 17. For the next one is 20 plus 24 which is 44. 44 divided by 2 give us 22. The next one is 25 plus 29 which is 54. 54 divided by 2 give us 27. We have 30 plus 34 which will give us 64. 64 divided by 2 give us 32. And then the last one we will have 35 plus 39 which is 74. 74 divided by 2 give us 37. So we now have the class midpoints for the different intervals. We are going to have the class midpoints on the horizontal axis and then the frequencies, which is the number of workers on the vertical axis. Now let's draw the histogram on the graph sheet. We have the graph sheet here and in our table, we have the class midpoints and then the number of workers or the frequencies. On the horizontal axis, I'm going to have the class midpoints, which are the ages of the workers. And then on the vertical axis, we will have the frequencies, which is the number of workers. The class midpoint starts from 12. On my horizontal axis, I'll begin the numbering from 12. So I'll bring this sign here to show that the part of the scale before 12 has been broken off. We will have to choose a scale for the vertical axis. So you will look at the values here and you will choose a scale such that the our graph will cover as much space as possible. Looking at the values here, I'm going to choose a scale of 2 cm to 1 unit on the vertical axis. But we know the unit here. The unit is the number of workers. So our scale will be 2 cm to 1 worker. And the name of the axis is the number of workers. So the axis will be the number of workers axis. So our scale will be 2 cm to 1 worker on the number of workers axis. Using this scale, we can number the vertical axis, just as I've done here. The next thing we have to do is to choose the width of the bars. Remember that you have to choose the width such that all the bars that you have will fit on the graph sheet. Here we have six different bars. I will let each bar occupy 10 minor divisions. So we will begin with the first one. The first one, the frequency is at 6. So I'll begin the first bar from this major grid line and then it will end on this major grid line. That means that it will cover 10 minor divisions. The height is at 6. That's the frequency is at 6. The class midpoint is 12. When you are using the class midpoints, the midpoint will be at the middle of the bar. Each bar is occupying 10 minor divisions, so the middle will be on the 5th division. So here 12 will be on the 5th division. We will move on to the next bar, which will be the bar for 17. The height or the frequency is at 8. Remember that for a histogram, we don't leave spaces between the bars. So it will be drawn attached to the first one. The height will be at 8. The class midpoint is 17. It will be at the middle of the bar, which will be the fifth division. The next one is 22. The frequency is at 11. The class midpoint, which is 22, will be at the center of the bar, so it will be on the fifth division. The next one is 27. The frequency is at 10, so the height will be at 10. The midpoint is 27 to be at the middle of the bar, which is the fifth division. The next one is 32. The frequency is at 5. So the height of the bar will be at 5. And then 32 will be at the middle, which is the fifth division. 
and then the last one is 37 the frequency is at 3 so the height of the bar will be at 3 and 37 will be on the fifth division after that you can add a little design to it for it to look nice we will have to choose a title for our histogram and we will get the title from the question. The question said that the table shows the age distribution of workers in the company. So my title will be a histogram showing the age distribution of workers in a company. We have been able to draw a histogram for the data that was given to us in the table using the class midpoints on the horizontal axis. As I said, in the next video, we are going to solve the same question. So we are going to draw the histogram again, but this time we will use the class boundaries on the horizontal axis. So see you in the next video and let's do that. Bye-bye.